So if you haven't seen my most recent episode on Alondo the Seer, make sure you check that out at some point to find out why I said what in the world when I saw this commander. But don't leave just yet because I've got the most ridiculous combo ever for you on a brand new exciting commander. So yeah, let's jump into it. First up, a huge thank you to MTG Goldfish for the translated version of this card. Now, the second that I saw, Jan Jansen, I think that's how Jan Jansen, I don't know. Someone in the comments below, please let me know. Chaos Crafter, regardless of how you actually say the name, right when I saw this guy, okay, now I'm throwing off. Okay, recompose starts the end of the day. Here we go. A 3 3 Gnome Artificer with haste that costs red, white, and a black. It has tap, sacrifice an artifact creature, create two treasure tokens. And tap, sacrifice a non-creature artifact, create two 1-1 one, one colorless construct artifact creature tokens. Okay, what I was saying earlier is that when I saw this commander, I just knew there have to be a multitude of ways to break it. I mean, this commander is, well, first off, it's hasty, which that definitely helps activate right away, but it has two abilities that kind of work together, essentially, if you're able to untap it, because you can tap and sacrifice an artifact creature, you get two treasure tokens, you can tap and sacrifice one of those treasure tokens to make two artifact creatures, and you see where this is going. Essentially, if you are able to keep untapping this commander again and again and again, you could, you know, make infinite treasure tokens and infinite construct tokens as well. Now, obviously, the problem that needs to be solved is how do you untap this commander repeatedly? I mean, obviously, if you were in, say, blue, you'd have access to something like Intruder Alarm, and I'm sure a multitude of other things that could help, but yeah, we are in Mardu, but we still have access to certain cards that can really help us out, and yeah, there was one that immediately came to mind. Now, before we jump into the cards, really quick, you do not have to build combo around this commander. This can just be a good, you know, value-centric commander, an aristocrat-style commander. Obviously, you know, if your playgroup's not okay with combos, then don't build combos like this one. But as always, with these commanders, I am including a link to the list of cards in the description in case you do want to build around this commander and your, you know, playgroup is okay with you building around combos. Uh, even if you're not building combos with this, there's also some cards in this episode that are going to work well with this commander when it's not comboing. So make sure you check out that link to the list in the description. And yeah, with that, let's do it. Now, the very first card that came to my mind was Dross Scorpion. This is, well, a card that doesn't really see all that much play, but one that can be fantastic in the right situation. It's an artifact creature that, now that I'm looking at it online, apparently has been errated to be also a scorpion. Cool. Anyways, whenever it or another artifact creature is put into a graveyard from play, you may untap target artifact. So this is a repeatable untap effect that can work with this commander in a way because, well, this commander is making artifact creature tokens, at least has the ability to, but unfortunately, obviously, you know, our commander itself is not an artifact, so we can't use this to untap our commander. Or can we? Because, of course, the next card, or should I say cards that came to my mind for this combo are cards like Liquid Metal Coating and Liquid Metal Torque. Liquid Metal Coating says tap target permanent becomes an artifact addition to other types until end of turn, and Liquid Metal Torque is basically the exact same thing, tap very colorless, tap target non-lane permanent becomes an artifact addition to other types until end of turn. Regardless, they work the exact same way for this combo. All you need to do is say, okay, uh, my commander is now an artifact. Awesome. Now I can target it with Draw Scorpion to untap it. But we actually are not done with this combo yet because, well, we do need one more piece or we're just going to get stuck at a certain point. And that piece would be a free sacrifice outlet for either a creature or an artifact. And the one I'm going to highlight right here is Goblin Bombardment, which is a fantastic one. It's in a chain that says sacrifice a creature, Goblin Bombardment deals one damage to any target. So by having a free sacrifice outlet like this one, we can sacrifice one of those constructs without needing to tap our commander, which is huge. Now, I will say to start this combo off, we do need some sort of an artifact creature or a non-creature artifact in play, you know, whether that's, you know, another token or, you know, a treasure token, whatever it is. But once we have that, the combo works like this. And just, you know, to make this easier to explain, let's just say that we have a treasure token to start, okay? And okay, now that I'm looking at these cards again, sorry, it is late in the day. Let's assume that we also have used Liquid Metal Torque to make our commander into an artifact. 
Now we can tap our commander to sacrifice our treasure, which again is sacrificing a non-creature artifact, and we're going to make two 1-1 one, one colorless construct artifact creature tokens. We then can utilize Goblin Bombardment to sacrifice one of those tokens to ping an opponent's face, or whatever we want. With that construct artifact creature token hitting the graveyard, and yes, tokens do hit graveyards technically, Draw Scorpion is going to see that and say, let's untap an artifact, which is going to be our commander. So then we can tap our commander again, and this time we're going to sacrifice the other construct that we still have in play. So by doing that, we are going to create two treasure tokens, and of course, Draw Scorpion is also going to see that and have us untap our commander again. So now we're essentially the exact same spot we were, but instead of having one treasure token, we have two. So we can essentially repeat this exact process again and again and again, essentially netting one treasure every single time we do this, so we can generate infinite mana, essentially, and we also can, you know, deal infinite damage with Goblin Bombardment as well. And actually, also, now that I'm saying this and looking through it, yeah, you should also just be able to make infinite constructs too, because if you've got infinite treasures, you could just keep tapping and sacrificing one of those treasures to make two constructs, and then you can just sacrifice one of them with bombardment to untap the commander, and yeah, essentially, I think that you just get infinite treasures infinite tokens, and infinite damage with Goblin Bombardment. So it is a pretty ridiculous combo, but yeah, this is the first thing that came to my mind when I saw this commander, and it's late in the day and I felt like talking about this, okay? Regardless, since you have, you know, infinite mana with all those treasures and infinite constructs, you can also utilize kind of pretty much any other sacrifice outlet that is free to kind of accomplish this same goal. Obviously, you're not immediately winning with infinite damage like you do with the Bombardment, but still. So other sacrifice outlets that can help you out, you know, in a somewhat similar way are Viserys or sacrifice a creature, scry one, so literally just look through your entire deck and find exactly what you want on top. Or how about Altar of Dementia, sacrifice a creature, target player, mills equal to its power, so yeah, just mill all of your opponents out with those tiny little constructs, again, one at a time milling your opponents out. Or how about a creature that is not a sacrifice outlet, but can work in a somewhat similar way with Goblin Sharpshooter? It doesn't untap during your untap step, but whenever a creature dies, you untap it, and it can tap to deal one damage to our creature or player. So with this, you can just keep pinging down your construct tokens and making infinite treasures. Also, you could win along the lines of cards like, you know, Disciple of Vault or Marinette Master, and yes, if you want even more tokens, Requiem Angel. Disciple of Vault says, whenever an artifact is put in a grave from the battlefield, you may have target opponent lose one life. So yeah, drain your opponents out with all those artifacts that you are sacrificing, and you know, if you just sacrifice those treasures too, that works as well. Same thing with Marinette Master, which has Fabricate 3, so it's going to be a 4-6, and whenever an artifact you control is put in a grave from the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to Marinette Master's power. So for every single artifact you have that hits the graveyard, you drain an opponent for four. And then Requiem Angel says, whenever another non-spirit creature you control dies, put a 1-1 white spirit control with flying onto the battlefield. So yeah, those constructs are not spirits, so cool. Let's just make a ton of spirits as well for whatever reason. I mean, I guess if you really want infinite uh, evasive creatures, there you go as well. And of course, just some cards to mention that do work well with this commander, you know, that you don't necessarily need. Again, if you're going to combo with it, though, are cards like Zorn in Academy Manufacturer. Zorn says if you'd create one or more treasure tokens, instead create those tokens plus initial treasure tokens. So yeah, who doesn't want even more tokens? Speaking of which, Academy Manufacturer says if you create a clue, food, or treasure token, instead create one of each. So again, with your infinite treasures, now you also get infinite clues and infinite food. So essentially, you know, draw as many cards in your deck as you want, gain infinite life, have fun from there. Or, you know, again, if you're not comboing, just still a great amount of value. But two other cards I want to highlight that can combo with this commander in somewhat similar ways are Clock of Omens and Thornbite Staff. Clock of Omens says tap two untapped artifacts you control, untap target artifact. So this one works very well with this commander. Again, essentially, if you can liquid metal torque your commander and make it into an artifact, you just say, okay, I'll sacrifice an artifact creature. I'll make two treasures. Now I'll tap those two treasures with the Clock of Omens to untap my commander. Then I'll tap and sacrifice a treasure to make two constructs. I'll tap those to untap my commander, and so on and so forth. So you end up essentially with infinite tapped treasures and infinite tapped constructs. But yeah, you can, you know, go around the table one more turn and untap. Have fun winning. And then Thornbite Staff says, pay two and tap. This creature deals one damage to our creature or player. And whenever a creature is put into a grave from play, untap this creature. So this would get around the need of having Dross Harvester and also having Liquid Metal Torque. But it is a much more expensive card. And I like my combo better, okay? It's more ridiculous. But yeah, definitely a great card to consider if you're going to be building around this commander and you've got the budget for it. 
At the end of the day, though, yeah, I just felt like this ridiculous combo needed to be shared, and I am sure there are plenty of other ridiculous combos that you can use around this commander. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts are on this combo, and also what other combos can you think of around this commander? And again, if you are planning on building around this commander and you think you might need some of these cards, make sure you check out that link to the list in the description. And yeah, of course, make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for even more exciting quick takes coming up. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.